I think in many ways, the soil-borne diseases are probably the most constraining of the diseases and pests that we face in strawberries. Watsonville is a community. It's supported by the strawberry industry. If as an industry we start to lose farms because we can't handle these soil-borne diseases, that would be a tragedy. So this area, thanks to this climate, um, strawberry harvest starts usually late March, continues until October or even November. But if plants have soybean diseases, uh, harvest can finish in June or July. So that's very big um, damage for growers. There are three major soybean diseases for strawberries in California. Versium dariae, uh, that's a pathogen's name, that uh, caused the Versium wilt. So Fusarium wilt caused by Fusarium oxysporum. And also charcoal root rot is caused by uh, Macrophomina fasciolina. Verticillium is probably the, the number one um, most problematic soil-borne disease. And it's a problem being a diversified organic grower is that we grow lots of vegetables that are potential hosts. Anaerobic soy dis disinfestation, known as ASD, is a biological process that can control a range of soil-borne pathogens using the principle of acid fermentation. There are three steps to, uh, to do ASD. The first step is to apply readily decomposable carbon source to the soil, which increase the microbial activity in a very short period of time. Then we cover the soil with plastic. Underneath, we usually use drip tapes to saturate the pore space with water, which starts the uh, anaerobic digestion of the carbon source we incorporated. And we leave it for usually for three weeks, during which anaerobic decomposition, like a fermentation process, takes place. The, these fermentation processes are, are the key to um, the, a lot of the disease suppression that we get with um, ASD. When there's no oxygen in the soil, bacteria have to use other pathways than the normal respiration pathways to, to break down the carbon. And there are various byproducts produced, organic acids, volatiles, that are toxic to certain pathogens and pests. Different microbes flourish under that new environment. Not only is it different, but there's actually more bacteria and more fungi than we started with. So it's not sterilizing the soil in any way. In fact, we're creating more biological activity in it. It's just a different kind of community. One of the interesting things about that is that it seems like that may confer some ability of the soil to resist future disease. It's great to be able to control something immediately, but it's even better if you can make a soil that's more resistant to reinfection down the road. With ASD, we're relying on the soil microbial community to do the work for us, and they require particular conditions. We have to be careful about the soil temperatures when we do ASD. For certain pathogens like verticillium, soil temperatures of around 70, 75 degrees are fine. But for other pathogens like fusarium wilt, uh, you need to have much higher soil temperatures for ASD to, to effectively control it. We've even found that the carbon source may be important, that some carbon sources are more able to control a particular pathogen than another and how to manage the water to get the good anaerobic conditions is going to be different if you have a more heavy soil than if you have a sandy soil. That's where we're at with the ASD work at this point is that we know that it can work for some things in some places and now we're trying to work out how to optimize it for particular locations, particular pathogens. Four or five years ago, we had maybe one or two acres being tested. Um, in the fall of 2014, we had 1,000 acres, which is a huge growth rate. And that wouldn't have been possible without the partnership that we built from the beginning with a local company called Farm Fuel, who import all the carbon material. And they also provide technical assistance to the growers on how to do ASD. That's been really important having that capacity to scale up. The potential of ASD that we've seen is uh, favorable results with increase in yields in the plants and overall health of the plants. It's uh, 
pretty obvious just looking out in the field, compares, comparing the ASD plants with the rows right next to it, the, the vigor of the plants and the health and the stronger plants, better pest resistance, disease resistance. One concern is the cost would be increased labor and the materials. Our first year uh, doing ASD was only a five acre test plot and each year has doubled. Um, right now we're at about 120 acres and we're about to add uh, more acres in our other districts. The hurdles that we have when applying ASD is that we have a very scarce uh, labor force. So trying to have a uh, turnaround time of one week, incorporating the ASD into the soil, putting the mulch, putting the drip tape, irrigating within a week's time is I think one of the biggest issues that we have. The most successful growers with ASD start off doing it on a small area, working out the kinks and then scaling it up. Because it, it is a lot, you know, you need to be able to have a way to get the carbon into the soil, get the beds made and get the plastic on and apply the water as quickly as possible. Otherwise that carbon is broken down aerobically, which won't have the benefits. So th there's a lot of mechanics to work out. So um, we really recommend that growers talk to other farmers who are doing it about how they've been able to get it to work and then try it in a small area first. Mm -hmm.